Returning to our product simulation example, it's time to do the basically last steps before you get to play with it. We have to do a Monte Carlo simulation using at risk. We've already set up the problem, so let's return to Excel. If you open the file that you created without at risk being loaded, you'll see things like name because Excel does not know uh, the at risk functions until at risk is available. So I'm going to go to the um, start button here and choose um, all programs, Palisade Decision Tools, at risk 6. And this will bring in the at risk um, suite of functions and programs. I would recommend that you try the guided tour and some of the videos, the quick start interactive tutorials, some example models. There's a lot of good things here about how to learn at risk that you should try at some point. So we've set up everything. Uh, there's just a couple things left to do. We want to tell at risk that profit is what we're really interested in. So I'm going to click in the profit cell and uh, click on this icon called add output. We'll leave the name as Profit and just click on OK. And then uh, we're going to start the simulations. Right now it's set at 100,000 iterations. So I think I, well, maybe I'll leave it at 100,000. What will happen here is it will choose a fixed cost based on the uniform distribution we have, then a labor cost, and then a materials cost, and a competitor's price. Calculate the average demand. Compute an actual demand. That will change the revenues and, of course, the cost and the profit. Store that number. Now repeat. Do that, do that, do that, and do this 100,000 times. Let's find out how long this takes. I'll just start the simulation with this icon, and we'll watch it uh, run. This will tell us basically the progress of, of the program. In the old days, this would take quite a bit of time to run, but as you can see with... Um, this somewhat modern laptop, it's taking very little time whatsoever uh, to finish the simulation. And uh, I'm going to enlarge this window just a little bit. This is the uh, important window, so to speak. It tells us what the profit is doing. And you can see it's kind of a lumpy histogram. It's got some borders here. You can get some statistics off to the side, like the minimum Profit is a negative 15 million. In other words, you lost 15 and a half million dollars. Maximum was very close to 60 million dollars. Uh, you can see the mean is almost 13 million. Mode is around six, nine and a half million for the median. The um, distribution of values is like any histogram. You can see it's very low bars. I mean, it's very unlikely to have any profit up in this range. This seems to be the most common, which of course is the mode at around 6 million. These um, borders are movable, so you can move this up. I'm going to move it up to zero here at the bottom, which tells us there's a 17.5% uh, chance, that's how many of those 100,000 simulations, uh, ended with a less than zero, in other words, a negative profit, you lost money. And at the moment, 5% chance that uh, you were above 35, almost 36 million. And you can change those to any uh, kind of rankings you want. So you can get some sort of sense of what's the chance I'll make that kind of money. For instance, uh, if you wanted to move between, say, 0 and 14.5, there's about a 43% chance, 43% of the simulations had results, uh, profit results in that uh, interval. One of the handy things to look at is uh, this item down here next to uh, the histogram. It's called a tornado graph. So I'm going to click on tornado graph and uh, change in output. There's also a spider, regression coefficient, correlation coefficient. I guess I'll choose this bottom one. What it's trying to tell us is this. Um, correlation coefficients, you might remember, are positive. That's this side. If um, that variable's change has a uh, similar effect on the value you're looking at. So 
the fact that the competitor's price has a very positive correlation coefficient means that when the competitor's price goes up, our profit goes up. When competitor's price goes down, profit goes down. They move in the same direction. On the other hand, the negative value for the correlation coefficient for materials says that as the materials price goes up, profits do exactly the opposite. They go down. And as materials costs go down, the profit does the exact opposite. They go up. Notice the um, very, very small um, correlation coefficient for fixed costs and actually for actual demand um, is trying to tell us that fixed costs have essentially no effect on um, the profit. Uh, the fixed cost could change quite a bit and not affect the profit at all. You might recall that the um, fixed costs were really quite small considering you're making somewhere around a six million dollar profit. Uh, if that's all it costs to produce your six million dollar profit that's really quite good and it can change to a hundred and ten or two hundred and forty thousand dollars. really has very little effect on your change in profit. So I'm going to go back to the histogram. The question you might ask now is, how am I going to explain this to someone who maybe hasn't had as much statistics as I have? What is it about this graph that I can explain to them? What is it about, I'm going to close this graph, I can explain to them about my model. What would they be concerned about? Well, you notice we had to set up a model using the point estimate. It was really just to get the structure. I'm going to call that the structure of the simulation, the structure of the model. Um, that's kind of doubtful unless you have an incorrect structure that that would be incorrect. But we made some estimates. We decided that labor was going to fit a normal distribution. What if labor costs do not have a normal distribution? We had assumptions on our materials costs. Perhaps these are not correct. These are where the assumptions really lie in this model and that's something that our uh, management or people who make decisions should think about as they look at our profit estimate. Now in the uh, for further steps I'm going to ask you to change some of these values for instance to change our price to always be ten dollars less than this which is easily done if you just change this formula to be equals this number minus 10 and that will change the simulation materials price if you can get a contract and this is going to be a fixed amount then you just change that to the fixed amount I want you to rerun the simulation look at that distribution of values look at the tornado diagram and try to decide what is it I'm going to tell management about what I've found by doing these simulations Thank you.